Hear God's word as we receive it in Matthew 22, beginning with verse 15. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Give back to God what is God's. That's a pretty powerful way to live your life. It's not about me. It's about God. I'm part of something bigger. The work I do from day to day, the love I show to people in little ways, is part of a great purpose. I'm going somewhere. My life has meaning. Notice that Jesus doesn't say give to God. He says give back to God. The life you offer to God was God's in the first place. Just before Jesus made this amazing, liberating statement, he told a parable about a landowner who went into a far country. He left tenants to care for his land. The tenants are not landowners, they are tenants, caretakers, stewards. Jesus tells the parable and asks the religious leaders he is talking to, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answer, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him back his share of the crop at harvest time. The tenants are charged with caring for the landowner's property, and the whole purpose is to produce fruit. When the landowner comes back to the property that he owned all along, the tenants will give back what was the landowner's all along. Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give back to God what is God's. The Roman coin helps us see what Jesus is talking about. On the coin is the image of Caesar. This image shows who the coin belongs to. This image calls to mind something God said in the first chapter of the Bible. At the creation of the world, God says, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. We are created in the image of God. Our lives are like the image on the coin. We are symbols of the one who created us. Just as the Roman coin declares the power of Caesar, our lives demonstrate the power of God. Jesus says, give the coin back to the one who minted it in the first place. The coin is an expression of the authority of Caesar throughout the empire. Why should you not use this coin to pay the poll tax? Jesus is in, a, is, in a sense, making the statement into a parable with the next statement. Give back to God what is God's. What is God's? Your body, your soul, your mind, your life. 
we are not our own. Paul says it well in 1 Corinthians 7. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The despairing voice can rise up to say the opposite. You may hear negative, self-destructive things coming from a loved one, or you may be hearing them inside your own head. You look at your life and say, this is meaningless. That's not true. Pull out your Bible and look. There you will find thousands of statements of faith that set us back on track. Let's add these amazing words of Jesus to our arsenal. Give back to God what is God's. Jesus, facing his enemies, facing the cross, shows us the right attitude to take. Our lives don't belong to us in the first place. We belong to God. John's Gospel describes Jesus' last hour with these beautiful words. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. We come from God and we are going to God. We are not our own. Give what is God's back to God. As St. Paul says in Romans 12, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Give your whole life, body, soul, and mind back to God. This is the only appropriate response to the one who has, in Jesus Christ, given his life for you. When you give your life back to God, God will give it back to you again. It will be a life in the real world. You'll pay taxes. You'll report to work. You'll pay your traffic fines like everybody else. But you'll have a quality of life that will be totally different. You'll be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You will be a tenant in God's vineyard, producing fruit to give back to God. You will be living out a life that is a glow because truly you are created in the image of God. Now to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.